What a wonderful time to be born in the USA. Just in time to see the first man to travel to and back from the moon and witness the carnage of the technical age with regular nuclear detonations, including the hideous hydrogen bomb on black and white television. On some occasions, we watch these displays on our neighborhood's brand new RCA color TV just before the Walt Disney show would come on. Lyndon Johnson, president at the time, seemed to like to scare the daylights out of people with regular warnings of a nuclear attack until he decided, I will not run for re-election as your president. As if anybody really wanted him to be their president. That's right. On the 13th of November, 1963, at approximately 11 a.m., I and other elementary school children were knocked to the ground from the only known accidental nuclear device detonation openly reported in the United States of America. National security, appropriately, because that is their job to do so, tried to depress and censor the press. But everybody was scrambling under the daily instructions of Vice President Lyndon Bird Johnson, famous television series explaining what to do if a nuclear bomb explodes near your school. Ever wonder where the phrase, grab your ankles and kiss your ass goodbye, came from? After the death of President John F. Kennedy, who just happened to be in San Antonio, Texas, there's a contradictory report he was not when the explosion detonated on the Medina Military Annex Southwest San Antonio. Kennedy's death took place on Friday, November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas, at 12.30 p.m. But before his death and Vice President Johnson was sworn into office, the VP nuclear safety programs would interrupt anything of importance on TV, including the Walt Disney Show. It seemed Johnson just wanted to scare the hell out of us, all with the test films of the colossal destruction just one of these bombs can do, usually attached to a training film using high school students as actors in class after hearing the nuclear attack alarm. Ever wonder where that irritating sound came from when even today the TV flashes, this is a test? The nuclear bomb safety instructions usually said the same thing. The first thing is to remain calm, climb under your desk, and place your head between your knees. Then loop your arms over your legs and clasp your hands together. After a very large boom accompanied with the ground shaking ends, resume back to your classroom duties. In today's world, it seems we have a problem with the reliability of all these microwave towers and high-tech devices to send a loud, irritating noise to warn us of an attack. I think we're better off with cheap black-and-white televisions with rabbit ear antennas, which sometimes required a couple of pieces of aluminum foil. At my age, I would have never thought a group of terrorists would group together and conspire an assassination attempt by combining to highly volatile explosives including U-235 enriched by 4% volume uranium, sending out a band of ionizing radiation for at least 100 miles for ground zero. Still today, we see cases of radiation diseases such as thyroid cancer, arthritis, and birth defects in the area. Recently, there was a report released showing an unusual increase in epilepsy in south-central Texas with a map that circles the epoch of the explosion. These weren't your typical terrorists, as Texas Governor Rick Perry just suggested in a 2012 national presidential debate, saying the profile of a terrorist are all Muslims, which rightly angered the Muslim community. He would have probably started rioting an American flag burning in every street in America if he said, all terrorists are fundamental Christians. My experience is a victim of three terrorist bombings. They never are typical, nor do they have a correlation to religion, race, or country. In this case, however, I have a good reason to believe they are conservative Texans. That is why I contacted the Office of Inspector General when Texas Governor Perry ordered all state employees to participate in a Tea Party rebellion or lose their jobs. What a shame law enforcement did not act on a valid complaint. The economic crisis would have ended in just a few months if they would have arrested him then for engaging in insurrection and Tea Party rebellion against the citizens of the United States. I figured they paid no mind to my valid complaint because they don't know Texas right-wing neo-Nazi like we do. Later on, they kind of got a hint when somebody invited the wrong person to go hunting at Governor Rick Perry's nigger head hunting camp. There's no doubt in my mind that's what was once hunted there. 
While it was all forgiven, even when a well-known politician mocked Governor Rick Perry by announcing he had this prayer get-together in Texas because, of course, we know that Jesus said that when you pray, go to the largest auditorium as possible and let people take images of you praying so they will think you're a holy man. Jesus never said shotguns on the campaign trail. He added jabbing Perry for bragging about killing a coyote last year. Lastly, he said, Jesus never shot a coyote in Reno just to watch him die which is a true statement if you are a Bible-thumping Christian fundamentalist. In the case of the nuclear terrorist bombing in San Antonio, Texas in 1963, these terrorists were white supremacists earning degrees in nuclear physics in Germany and one attended law school right here in San Antonio. One of the suspects was a member of the John Birch Society. On the 13th of November, 1963, at approximately 11 a.m., Myself and other elementary school children were knocked to the ground from the only known accidental nuclear device detonation openly reported in the United States of America. Everyone knew it was a nuclear explosion when windows broke out on the north side of San Antonio, and we did what Vice President Johnson told us. After a large boom accompanied with the ground shaking ends, resume back to your classroom duties. Well, actually, nobody resumed their classroom duties. Most started to look for loved ones and speeding to nuclear evacuation routes, stating such on entrance ramp signs onto Highway Loop 410 that circled the city. However, the Texas Highway Department neglected to place exit evacuation signs, so half the town burned a tank of gas going around in circles. Some copped an attitude, such as me and one other classmate, still upset with the interruption of the Walt Disney show by Johnson telling us to remain calm and return to our classroom duties, which just happened to be playground recess. The evening before, it had rained and left the ground a little muddy in spots, and we spent the better part of eight hours abandoned at school before the educators returned to their classroom duties and found us. This particular school had a small dog that had its kennel in the playground, and we let the dog out to play. What to do if a nuclear bomb explodes near your school? The dog tracked through a few mud holes and jumped up and down on us, leaving black prints. Eight hours missing from our classroom evacuation group, the our educators examined the prints on our shirts and determined that they were playing card clubs shaped nuclear burn marks on our white shirts that had left red first-degree burns on the skin, as they explained to the emergency nuclear response team. Man, I can still see her horrified face talking on the phone as my fellow classmates snickered behind her back as she was speaking to the emergency response team whispering and sometimes spelling out words thinking we were too young to understand, not wanting to alarm us or make us cry in fear. As I have explained, we were the type of kids that did exactly what they were told. Who had a deep resentment for Johnson's training programs that interrupted the Walt Disney show, which we all had to walk three blocks to a geek of kids' house to watch it on colored TV. We were both transported to Welford Hall Hospital that had a nuclear accident operating room. We waited in a secured room that had colored TV, so we were not in any emergency. If I remember right, my classmate, and also burn victim, put out this lame fake cry. What about Buffy? The dog. I could barely hold it when the nurse said, Oh, you brave, brave boys. Well, in fact, I could not go on with it and told them that the marks were mud tracks from the dog's paws. And for that comment, my classmate elbowed me as they began the final discharge from the hospital. Most would have thought I knew better to say anything while watching the Walt Disney show on somebody else's color TV. I ran as fast as I could from my pursuing classmate as he yelled, Odell, grab your ankles and kiss your ass goodbye. Gregory O'Dell, November 13, 1963, San Antonio, Texas, USA.